So now let us discuss Pure Mathematics 3 P32 March 2021 Part 1. First question Solve the equation natural logarithm of x cube minus 3 is equal to 3 times log x minus log 3. Give your answer correct to 3 significant figures. So write down the given equation log x cube minus 3 is equal to 3 log x minus log 3. Then the right side we can use power rule of logarithm. There is log x power n is n times log x. So that 3 log, log x becomes log x to the power 3. That's the second step. Then use uh, the division rule of logarithm. Log a over log b is log a minus log b. So that the right side becomes log x cube minus log 3 is log x cube over 3. Now you got log natural logarithm of x cube minus 3 is equal to natural log of x cube over 3. Now taking exponentiation on both sides and applying the result e power log x natural logarithm of x is nothing but x because exponentiation and uh, natural logarithm is one is the inverse of the other one. So you get uh, x cube minus 3 is equal to x cube over 3. Multiply throughout by 3, you get the next step 3x cube minus 9 is equal to x cube. Rearrange the terms and simplify, you get 2x cube is equal to 9, therefore x cube is 9 over 2 and x is equal to cube root of 9 over 2 that is x is equal to 1.65 <coughs> then second question the polynomial a x cube plus 5 x square minus 4 x plus b where a and b are constants a and b are constants is denoted by p of x it's given that x plus 2 is a factor of p of x and that when p of x is divided by x plus 1 the remainder is 2 so we need to apply factor theorem and remainder theorem so write down the polynomial p of x is ax cube plus 5x square minus 4x plus b. Given x plus 2 is a factor of p of x, therefore p of minus 2 equal to 0. That's a factor theorem. If x minus a is a factor of p of x, then p of a equal to 0. That's factor theorem. So applying that one you get p of negative 2 equal to 0. So substitute for x is equal to negative 2 you get a times negative 2 cube plus 5 times negative 2 square minus 4 times minus 2 plus b equal to 0. So when you simplify and rearrange the terms you get a linear equation in a and b that is negative 8a plus b equal to minus 28. Name this as equation 1. And use the second uh, condition that uh, when p of x is divided by x plus 1 the remainder is 2. So the remainder theorem says when a polynomial is divided by x minus a then p of a is the remainder. Okay, So p of a is the remainder, sorry remainder. So applying that uh, p of minus 1 is equal to 2. So substitute for x is equal to for x that is x value is minus 1 in the given polynomial. You get a times minus 1 to the power 3 plus 5 times negative 1 to the power 2 minus 4 times negative 1 plus b equal to 2. So further you simplify you get another linear equation a and b that is negative a plus b equal to minus 7. So name this as equation 2. So solving 1 and 2 equations, write down equations 1 and 2, uh, the 
and subtract it so change the sign of uh, the second uh, in terms of the second equation and add it you get uh, 7 the b and b get cancelled you get negative 7a equal to negative 21 so that is a is equal to 3 so substitute for a in 2 you get uh, minus 3 plus b equal to minus 7 therefore b is equal to negative 7 plus 3 gives you negative 4 so a is negative sorry a is 3 and b is negative 4 by first expressing the equation question number 3 next question read the question by first expressing the equation tan of x plus 45 degrees is equal to 2 cot x plus 1 as a quadratic equation in tan x solve the equation 0 less than x less than 180 so tan x plus 45 is equal to 2 cot x plus 1 given and apply tan a plus b formula tan a plus b is tan a plus tan b over 1 minus tan a tan b you can apply this and also apply the definition of cot theta cot theta is nothing but 1 over tan theta so these two results we apply here you get uh, tan x plus 45 becomes tan x plus tan 45 divided by 1 minus tan x times tan 45 equal to 2 cot x becomes 2 over tan x plus 1 and tan 45 is 1 tan 45 degrees is 1 so that you get tan x plus 1 over 1 minus tan x is equal to 2 cross multiply across the plus sign on the right side so 2 plus tan x over tan x and next step you cross multiply across the equal to sign you get tan x times tan x plus 1 equal to 2 plus tan x times 1 minus tan x then expand the bracket you get tan square x plus tan x equal to 2 minus 2 tan x plus tan x minus tan square x and you can cancel the uh, terms like terms on both sides and then simplify it you get a quadratic in tan x that is 2 tan square x plus 2 times tan x minus 2 equal to 0 2 is a common factor in all three terms so you can just divide by 2 throughout you get tan square x plus tan x minus 1 is equal to 0 you can use the quadratic formula that is ax square plus bx plus c implies x is equal to minus b plus minus under root b square minus 4ac over 2a so this quadratic formula when you apply x is tan x here so minus 1 plus or minus under root 1 square minus 4 times 1 times minus 1 over 2 times 1 2a that is tan x is equal to minus 1 plus or minus under root 5 over 2 so you get two values positive and negative so you get x is equal to tan inverse of minus 1 minus root 5 over 2 or x is equal to tan inverse minus 1 plus root 5 over 2 now let us uh, use the calculator you find tan inverse of negative 1 minus root 5 over 2 is minus 58.3 and the other angle is 180 minus theta 58.3 because tan is positive in the first quadrant and the third quadrant therefore tan theta is tan 180 plus theta so here theta is minus 58.3 that's why it is 180 minus 58.3 therefore when you simplify you get uh, minus 58.3 and 121.7 two values same way here on the other side tan inverse of minus 1 plus root 5 under 2 sorry over 2 uh, under root root of 5 over 2 gives you 31.7 and the other angle 180 plus theta that gives 221.7 so the two values are 31.7 and 221.7 but uh, given x lies between 0 and 180 x lies between 
0 and 180. So therefore the values of x are 31.7 and 121.7. And question number 4. The variables x and y satisfy the differential equation 1 minus cos x times dy by dx is equal to y sin x and it is given that y is equal to 4 when x is equal to pi. So solve the differential equation obtaining an expression for y in terms of x. Okay, write down the differential equation 1 minus cos x times dy by dx is equal to y times sin x. So you rearrange the terms or collect uh, the variables of same type. Separate y on the left side and x on the right side. So integral dy over y equal to integral sin x over 1 minus cos x dx. So that is name this as equation 1. Now consider the right side integral. So let it be i1 is equal to integral sin x over 1 minus cos x dx. So use substitution to solve this integral. Let u is equal to 1 minus cos x. Therefore derivative of u is 1 becomes 0 minus cos x is uh, minus uh, sin x. Already there is a minus. So minus to minus plus sin x because d, of d by dx of cos x is equal to negative sin x. So when you apply that here, 0, 1 is 0. When you differentiate constant 1 becomes 0. So minus cos x is minus sin x. So that becomes positive sin x. So derivative of u is sin x dx. Therefore i1 is integral derivative of u over u equal to ln u. Integral dx over x is log x. So and substitute for u, u is 1 minus cos x, therefore i1 is natural logarithm 1 minus cos x, name this equation 2. Now substituting 2 in 1, you get um, integral dy by d, integral dy over y is equal to um, or 1 over y times, oh sorry, integral 1 over y dy, so dy is an operator, so is equal to ln 1 minus cos x plus logarithm c. Let's, let us substitute uh, for the uh, constant of integration or the arbitrary constant as log c. You can also keep c but uh, it is uh, easy for us for our convenience so we keep it as uh, logarithm of c if other terms are all logarithmic terms. So that is ln logarithm of y is equal to ln of 1 minus cos x plus log c. And use um, the product rule of logarithm for the, on the right side you get um, log a plus log b is log ab. So you get uh, log c times 1 minus cos x. And taking exponentiation on both sides and applying the result e power log x is x. e to the power natural logarithm of x is x because exponentiation and natural logarithm is uh, or one is the reciprocal function of the other one. So you get y is equal to c times 1 minus cos x and uh, to get the value of c you can use the given condition that y equal to 4 when x is equal to pi. So use that one here we get c is equal to 2. Therefore equation of the curve is our expression is y is equal to 2 times 1 minus cos x. So and sketch the graph of y against x. So the function is y is equal to 2 minus 2 cos x and uh, so you can draw the graph. So in general form when y is equal to a minus b cos x. So you just uh, this is the baseline y is equal to a and it extends from a plus b to a minus b. So here it is 2 my plus 2 to 2 minus 2 
that is 4 to 0 the curve lies between 4 and 0 and uh, so the y is equal to minus cos x the shape of the curve is inverted u so the curve is inverted u it goes like that so normally the curve minus 1 y equal to minus cos x so it's like that but here uh, your uh, this is x equal y is equal to 0 y is equal to 1 so here the y values lies uh, between 0 and 4 so you get this uh, sketch so the curve lies between the y limits 0 and 4 and 2 is the this line 5 read the question x plus under root 7 sin x plus 2 cos x in the form r times sin x plus alpha where r greater than 0 and alpha lies between 0 and 90 state the exact value of r and give alpha correct two decimal places so the given uh, expression that is root under root 7 sin x plus 2 cos x is equal to r times sin x plus alpha we need to find r and alpha and r is nothing but so when you compare with general form here sin x plus b cos x is equal to r times sin x plus alpha we get r by is equal to root of a square plus b square and tan alpha is given by b over a we can use this result here so a is under root 7 and b is 2 therefore r is under root uh, root of 7 square plus 2 square that is 7 plus 4 under root that is under root 11 r is under root 11 and tan alpha is b over a the b is 2 here and a is under root 7 so that gives 2 over root of 7 so alpha is tan inverse of 2 over root 7 that gives alpha is 37.09 correct to two decimal places therefore root 7 times sin x plus 2 cos x is nothing but under root 11 times sin of x plus 37.09 degrees so hence solve the equation root 7 sin 2 theta plus 2 cos 2 theta equal to 1 so here the argument became 2 theta so root 7 sin 2 theta plus 2 cos 2 theta equal to 1 so when you apply the result in part a it is in the form r sin x plus alpha form so we got r and alpha so that is under root 11 this is your r value and sin 2 theta x is 2 theta plus 37.07 equal to 1 therefore sin 2 theta plus 37.09 is equal to 1 over root of 11 and so 2 theta plus 37.9 is equal to sin inverse of this one therefore you can use the calculator to get sine inverse of 1 over root 11 is 17.55 and this other angle is 180 minus that is the sine is positive in the first quadrant and in the second quadrant so sine theta is sine 180 minus theta so by using that one you get other angle is 180 minus theta theta is 17.55 and apply periodicity that is uh, any angle when you add 360 or multiples of 360 still the position of the ray is the same the angle is the same therefore 17.55 plus 360 this you can add apply the periodicity when you get uh, 2 theta or 3 theta uh, other than theta so still the values theta will be within the given uh, range of values so 2 theta plus 37.09 is 17.55, 162.45 and 377.55. Therefore 2 theta is equal to, you bring this uh, plus 37.09 uh, to the right side or subtract with all the values, this value that is 37.09. You get 2 theta is equal to negative 19.54, 125.36 and 377.55. That's where, and again, since there is a negative angle 19.54, you just add a 360 degrees. That is, apply periodicity again, so make it positive. So, 
so minus 19.54 plus 360 gives 340.46 and the other angles are 125.36 and 377.55 uh, so therefore theta is 2 theta is these values therefore theta is divide all the angles by 2 you get 170.2 62.7 and 188.8 so out of these three values the two values which lie within the range that is 0 to 180 degree is only 62.7 and 170.2 so only two values of theta and question number six let f of x is equal to 5a over 2x minus a times 3a minus x where a is a positive constant x plus f of x in partial fractions so f of x is equal to 5a over 2x minus a times 3a minus x and given therefore we can split into partial fractions uh, 5a over 2x 2 minus a times 3a minus x is a over the first factor plus b over the second factor and uh, the right side you can simplify by cross multiplying across the plus sign so get a times 3a minus x plus b times 2x minus a over 2x minus a times 3a minus x so equating the numerators on both sides you get 5a is equal to a times 3a minus x plus b times 2x minus a name this as equation 1 and let's find the values of a and b there are two ways to find that one one of the method is by arbitrary substitution so so that we can make one term zero and get the other constant easily other one is expanding it and equating the like coefficients so that will be a bit lengthier so we go by this one this will be simpler so put x is equal to input x equal to 3a in 1 so then what happens the first term becomes zero therefore 5a is equal to left side there is no x to substitute so just 5a only so 5a equal to 0 plus b times 2x x is 3a so 2 times 3a minus a that gives 5a is 5ab therefore b is 1 and for to get the other constant value of a you get my input x equal to 0 in 1 you get 5a equal to capital letter a times 3a plus 1 b is 1 substitute for b 0 minus a so that when you simplify you get 3a times capital a equal to 6a that is the constant a uh, which is to be found is 2 therefore you get the partial fractions f of x is equal to 2 over 2x minus a plus 1 over 3a minus x and b subdivision the same question hence show that integral a to 2a f of x dx is logarithm of 6 natural log of 6 so integral a to a f of x dx is you apply the partial fractions you write in partial fraction form the f of x so 2 over 2x minus a plus 1 over 3a minus x so that is uh, the constants can be taken outside the integral so you get 2 times integral a to 2a 1 over 2x minus a dx plus a to 3a 2a 1 over 3a minus x dx and you can apply uh, the result that is integral 1 over ax plus b dx is nothing but 1 over a natural logarithm ax plus b so you can use this result so that it becomes 1 over 2 times 1 over a that is 1 over 2 and logarithm of 2x minus a between the limits a and 2a and same way here 3a minus x so when you compare with ax plus b your a is negative 1 therefore 1 over negative 1 ln 3a minus x between the limits a and 2a and so now substitute the limits upper limit minus lower limit ln 3a the 2 to get cancelled so you get ln 3a minus uh, ln of a minus this uh, 1 over minus 1 plus plus into minus minus so logarithm of 
थ्री ए माइनस टू ए इट इज ए माइनस लॉन्ग टू ए सो लॉग थ्री ए माइनस लॉग ए माइनस लॉग ए प्लस लॉग टू ए एंड यू गेट लॉग थ्री ए माइनस सॉरी प्लस लॉग टू ए माइनस टू टाइम्स लॉग ए एंड दैट इज लॉग थ्री ए अप्लाई प्रोडक्ट रूल एंड डिविजन रूल ऑफ लॉग रिदम्स यू गेट लॉग थ्री ए वन इट इज प्लस इट्स मल्टीप्लाइज वन दैट इज माइनस इट गोज फॉर डिविजन डिनोमिनेटर सो थ्री ए टाइम्स टू ए ओवर ए स्क्वायर एंड दिस सिक्स ए स्क्वायर ओवर ए स्क्वायर गेट ए स्क्वायर एंड ए स्क्वायर गेट कैंसल सो यू गेट लॉग सिक्स दैट्स वॉट वी नीड टू प्रूव एंड क्वेश्चन नंबर सेवन टू लाइन्स हैव इक्वेशंस द वेक्टर इक्वेशंस आर वेक्टर इज गिवन बाय द कॉलम वेक्टर वन थ्री टू दैट इज आई प्लस थ्री जे प्लस टू के प्लस एस इन टू एस के एल आर टू आई माइनस जे प्लस थ्री के and the other line is r vector is equal to uh, 2i plus j plus 4k plus t the other scalar times i minus j plus 4k so the direction vectors are we uh, show that the lines are skew so we need to show that lines are skew and so first let us prove that they are not uh, parallel so take the direction vectors that is 2i minus j plus 3k and i minus j plus 4k these are the two direction vectors so you just uh, divide the components of the like components 2i here it is i so 2 over 1 and minus j here minus j so minus 1 over 1 and you see the ratio if two lines that is a1i plus a2j plus a3k if this is one direction vector and b1i plus b2j plus b3k if this is another uh, direction vector if they are parallel then a1 over b1 equal to a2 over b2 equal to a3 over b3 that's a condition if they are parallel but uh, here we observe that uh, they are not equal so a1 is over b1 is not equal to a2 or b2 and not equal to 3 1 3 over uh, a3 over b3 so this condition here therefore the lines are not parallel so that's the condition to check for parallel lines and now let us uh, go for with to check whether they are intersecting or not so any point on the line 1 is given by i uh, take uh, the vector equation take uh, the component i component so 1 plus 2s and the j uh, the y coordinate the j component is 3 minus s and the k component that is the z coordinate is 2 plus 3s same way any point on the vector equation of the line 2 uh, of the line 2 is 2 plus that is i component is 2 uh, plus t and the y component or the j component is 1 minus t and the k component is 4 plus 4t so that gives the coordinates of any point on line 2 so if they intersect if two lines intersect then the point the point of intersection is common to both the lines so if we let us say if they intersect then at that point of intersection these two points will have the same x coordinate and y coordinate and z coordinate so the equating the x coordinate you get uh, 2s minus t equal to 1 name this as equation 3 and uh, equating the y coordinate you get another equation minus s plus t equal to negative 2 equation 4 and the z x z coordinate when you equate you get another equation s and t 3s minus 4t equal to 2 so name these three equations as 3 4 and 5 so let us solve equations 3 and 4 and to find the values of s and t so by solving 3 and 4 you get s is equal to minus 1 and substitute back uh, the value of s in 1 you get t is equal to minus 3 and to check the consistency of these three equations first let us solve any two equation to find the variables and substitute that in the third equation if it gets satisfied the lines are consistent if they are not uh, satisfied uh, then then 
uh, we can say the three equations are inconsistent. So you can say after getting the values of s and t, substitute in equation 5, that's the third equation and we get 9 is equal to 2, so which is not true, therefore the equations are inconsistent, the equations are inconsistent, therefore the lines are not intersecting and hence we just now proved that uh, the lines are not parallel and lines are not intersecting, therefore they are skew lines. So find the acute angle between the directions of the two lines. So the direction vectors are 2i minus j plus k 3k and i minus j plus 4k. So name this as a vector and b vector and so magnitude of a vector is the square of the i component plus the square of the j component and square of the k component. So we get 2 square plus 1 square plus 3 square that gives root of 14 and the magnitude of b is 1 square plus minus 1 square plus 4 square that gives root of 18. So the formula to find angle between two vectors is a dot scalar product of a b that is a dot b over magnitude of a times magnitude of b that gives 2i minus j plus 3k dot i minus j plus 4k and over root of 14 times under root 18. So when you find the dot product you get 2 plus 1 plus 12 over root of 14 times root of 18 that is cos theta is 15 over root of 14 over root of 18 times root of 18 therefore theta is cos inverse of 15 over under root 14 times under root 18 that gives 19.1 degrees or 0 0.333 radians.